Jesus is aware of how his purposes are established upon the face of the earth and he knows that you are not going to make any headway if you don't have an allocation of power so before we requested for power Jesus said what? ye ah, you understand this matter it's not as if you went out and then you saw that ah there's need to let me come and request apply for power before the job even starts he said you know what take I have a location <laughs> for you. It is expected that the measure of the Holy Spirit that you receive will become the foundation for the generation of that power. But the average believer has decided to live short of the provisions that Jesus made available. And, and, and that is what is customary. That's what we are used to. We are expecting the best, but we are not willing to fully maximize the capacity that Jesus has allocated to us. Come with me quickly. I need to show you something. Are you there? Okay. Notice in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, there are two things he speaks about. There are two things that go hand in hand there are two things that we cannot separate from each other and that is spirit and power you will receive spirit first and then the spirit will produce power come with me to the book of Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter 1, are you there? All right. Can we begin to read from verse number 5? Read from verse 5. We'll read through to like 17. There was in the days of, of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord blameless and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren and their boat were now well stricken in years and it came to pass while he executed the priest office before God in the order of his course according to the custom of the priest office his Lord was to burn the incense when he went into the temple of the Lord and the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Uh, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, but he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Verse 17 is my emphasis. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of what of Elias now you know I'm trying to show you something there's a combination the spirit power combination are you with me he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah the prophet God said you will receive power but that power that you receive will be the result of receiving so there are two things spirit and power okay because there are two things we need to conduct a query we'll conduct a query the first query that we're going to conduct we're going to query 
power. When we finish querying power, we will now query spirit. When I finish these two, you will know where you are in the map. In the map of destiny. It's after that that you will see the need for us to activate. And thank God I have a little time. When we are done with the, practic the theory aspect, we will now go to the practical aspect. Because the kingdom of God is not in war. Words are weak to illustrate kingdom things. Are you there? So let us query power. John the Baptist was supposed to go in the spirit and power of Elias. Somebody help me with John chapter 4. John chapter 10. Quickly. John John 10 verse 40 and 41 and went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized and he abode there He's talking about Jesus and many resorted unto him and said John did no miracle but all things that John speak about this man were true are you there Jesus went to retreat around Jordan where John used to baptize and many people resorted to him many people came to him and when they came to him, they brought a report of John's ministry. And they said, John, he did no miracle. That's the first report. But the things that John said about this man, they were true. That means John operated in the spirit. He was inspired by the Spirit. John spoke about Jesus through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And the people came to confirm that the things that John said were actually inspired of God because they were true. But the problem with John's ministry was that John did no miracle. It means John received the Spirit and based on the inspiration that they confirmed it was the genuine Holy Spirit but the problem with John's ministry was that there was a shortfall because John did not operate in power even though the prophetic word that captured his destiny revealed that he was supposed to operate in the spirit and in the power of prophet Elijah but there was a shortfall in his ministry no power ever manifested many believers in our time have decided to, to summarize their lives within the scope of this first short form. Where the Spirit of God in them is valid, and you could see the inspiration with which they pray in tongues. The Spirit of God in them is valid. You could see the energy that is generated when they bask in the Holy Ghost. But, there was another island or spiritual possibility that they did not explore. Our generation is coming to that point where we are accepting a life without power. For John did no miracle. That's the first query. Should I tell you something? I hope you know there were two of Jesus' disciples that came from the village called Bethsaida. And in the book of Matthew chapter 23, you will find Jesus placing curses on some cities. The second city Jesus placed a curse on was Bethsaida. Imagine that Jesus be begins to curse cities and then the name of your city was mentioned. And there were two of his disciples that came from that location. 
Can you imagine the kind of emotion that will be stirred in the camp? Quiet emotion. And the reason for which Jesus placed a curse on those cities was that if the signs and wonders that were done in those cities were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. Indicative of the fact that the witness of the gospel of the kingdom that came to Sodom and Gomorrah was an insufficient witness. It was lacking in power. And the, as sinful as you saw that the men of Sodom and Gomorrah were, there was actually hope for them to turn to the Lord if the witness that came to them came with a dimension of power. So anytime we accept a civilization that is at home with a shortfall of possibility, at home with a powerless state of existence, what we are accepting is that our witness on earth will be insufficient. Think about it. The way we are going to do this work is by power. Let that be your prayer every night. I'm not going to be talkative. I will not be one of those that will be trying to explain scriptures all the days of my life. When, when, when Pharaoh asked Moses, who is the Lord that I should obey him? He was not requiring a theological exposition. He was not looking for a Bible school graduate to do ex exegesis. Who is the law that I should obey him? It means if you know him enough, show us him by his mighty works. That day, Moses did not preach a sermon. Our generation is asking us the same question, who is the law? that we should yield to him. Who is the Lord that we should serve him? Who is the Lord that we should bow before him? And if by any means we lack the power dimension of the economy of grace that we carry, we will become irrelevant in that day. That's the first query. Second query is spirit. Come with me to the book of Luke chapter 9. Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. We'll read from verse number 51. If you are still with me, say, Amen. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village of the Sam Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them as Elias did? And he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. The query in this second reading is a query of spirit. Hallelujah. The first query was the second query here is spirit. so Jesus began to pick the frequency that the time was come for him to go and offer himself in Jerusalem it was becoming strong on his heart even though he had sent people before his face to go to Samaria because Samaria became one of his retreat zones. He had like two retreat zones. One of them was Bethsaida. Uh, no, no, no. What's, what's that name? 
the home of Lazarus, Bethany. Bethany. Bethany was one of his resort places and the land of the Samaritans was another resort place. And I could imagine that there were delicacies among the Samaritans that Jesus had liked. So he had a place. They knew what he wanted. So when the news got to them that he was going to spend some time, they had prepared some of his delicacies and these meals were available. And then when they went to meet him at the border, it was as if he had a change of heart. And they said, but we prepared your favorite soup. That was not enough to convince him about changing his direction. We had labored all night to make preparation. His journey was still strong on his heart. So then I said, we don't even want to receive you again. So the moment that happened, James and John, now told Jesus that you've been teaching us how to call fire from heaven. Now, if you hear the way these guys are talking, you will know that they have they, they, they used to call fire during their practice. They used to call fire from them. So they were wondering when they will use that authority. The man told Jesus, is this not an appropriate situation for us to what? Invoke fire from. So these guys, there was no question about the power and the authority of their lives. But the Bible says, Jesus turned. That means Jesus first spoke to them with his face. If you start growing in intimacy with your wife, not every time she will talk. Sometimes she just open her eyes. Especially when there are visitors there. And she's beginning to sense that one of the people that came, you are not supposed to relate with this person. And she comes and opens the eye. If you have been with her for a while, you will just understand that it's time to dismiss that fellowship. <laughs> Jesus spoke first with his face. For the Bible says he turned. They saw his displeasure on his face before he now told them that it's obvious that you guys don't know what spirit you are of. The query was, what spirit? Oh, you are not following me. Now, now, now. Because you are not following, we cut one side of this syllabus. Okay, we have 55 minutes. So, we're supposed to go to Luke chapter 14. So, but we'll cut that one out. Because you are not... Jesus rebuked them. He says, you do not know what spirit ye are of. I have a gift, for instance, the gift of word of knowledge. If I, am, if I really, 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 really want to know how much you have in that your bag, when we start praying, I will just ask God, how much does he have? How much? How much? How much? I will be asking it like 12 times. The thing will open. Then I can tell you how much you have. After telling you how much you have, and you did not tell me the amount, and I tell you this is how much. If I now tell you that the Lord has need of that money, you will submit it. Because you didn't tell me how much you have. But you see, what I have done is that I've used that gift to steal from you. Because I do not know what spirit I have. The spirit that I have does not sanction stealing. So in my administration of the gift, I've used it to accomplish something that is not in the nature of that spirit. That is a proof that I don't know what spirit I'm carrying. Now, a lot of people under the anointing have done so many things. May you not do things just for the purpose of getting results. No. I will not, I will not do it 
There are many things that can be done to get results, but the goal is not results. The goal is that your relationship with God is held intact and God can trust you with higher measures of power, higher measures of authority because he did not abuse the allocation that he gave you in the first instance. You know not what spirit ye are of. Hallelujah. In my work with God, I have stood before presidents of nations to tell them what God is saying. But you see, I did not start there. Huh? God, the little one God gave me, I, administ I administered it as he wanted. He increased it. Because he, he trusts me. So he gives me another measure. That other measure can produce more drastic results than the previous measure. And once you administer it accurately, it will give you what? Yet another measure. So the key to growth in authority, the key to growth in power, is that you are conscious of the nature of the spirit you carry and you don't violate his nature. That means that you are eager to represent him accurately. And when that becomes your disposition, you have access to higher dimensions of the grace of God. Now let me show you how to activate power. How to move from the anointing of the Holy Spirit to the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you there? Okay, come with me quickly. Let me show you an example of what I mean. In the book of Acts chapter 6. Are you there in Acts chapter 6? Okay. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto him and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report and full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And this saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. So, the test case I want to take now is Stephen. What's the description for Stephen? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. A man full of faith and what? The Holy Ghost. So he was full of faith. He was full of the Holy Ghost. That was his description. That was his curriculum vitae. Now, come with me. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. After a period of time, Stephen's CV was revealed. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So initially, Stephen's description was that he was full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Then after a while, Stephen's description now became a man full of faith and power. So the anointing of the Holy Ghost on his life are transformed to become power. But you, you received the Holy Ghost and what you received was the ability to speak in tongues. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost on your life has not yet. How many years have you been speaking in tongues? It has not yet transformed to power. And if you continue like this, your life is going to produce insufficient witness. Does it not bother you how that we have many, many Christians around, but the issue of being able to evangelize our nation is something that seems to have no logical conclusion. It's because the average believer has accepted the position of insufficient witness. Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost, 
Stephen, a man full of faith and power. So he converted his own anointing. He converted it to power. Okay. Last scripture. Where we see Luke chapter Luke chapter 4 Turn to Luke chapter 4 quickly Let us just Can, you, can we look at Luke chapter 4 verse 1 quickly? And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wood wilderness. Uh, he was full of what? Oh, this the, the congregation has abandoned me. He was full of what? Now he left River Jordan. River Jordan was where he was baptized in water and baptized in the Holy Ghost. So he was full of the Holy Ghost. And then he was led by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. So what will posters are good though. Posters are good. Handbills are good. Flyers on Facebook, on Instagram, powerful. But what will make the fame of what is happening here travel? It's power. I need me to suffer. I need to be. 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 I need to